Well, hello and welcome back. Uh, this is going to be Project 11, the demo on how to do the split screen. Um, so you can create uh, what seems like a simultaneous dialogue you're having with yourself. Uh, we're going to use, again, we're going to use Luma matting to do this. So let's go in, we'll do a new composition. For this comp, we're going to do 720 wide by 540 high. Frame rate's going to be um, 29.97. And duration has to be at least 20 seconds. The video footage that I shot is about 38 seconds at the most. So I'm starting with 40 seconds here, you can see. So I'm going to click OK. And now I want to go get my video footage. And I filmed it on my iPod, or my iPhone, sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so I'm going to go to uh, iCloud here and download the footage. And it looks like one of my clips is 38 seconds and the other is 36. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure both of these are selected. Hold down Shift and click on the second clip. And just go ahead and download those. And what it's going to do is download it as a zip file. And you can see there my zip file down below here. And so I'm just going to grab this. I created a window, I mean a folder that says AE10 split screen footage 32823. So I'm just going to drag that zip file into my folder that I made. And now I'll need to unzip this. So for Windows users, you can just right click on it, choose Extract All, or if you're using like 7up, you can ch ch click on 7up and then Extract. So I'm just going to click Extract All, and I'm just going to go and extract in the same folder there. You can see there, there's my unzipped folder, and there are my two clips right there. Um, so I don't need uh, iCloud anymore because I've got my clips here on my desktop. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is bring these two clips in. Uh, I can just bring them right onto the timeline, actually. And notice here when I bring it to the timeline, it makes a copy up here in the project window. So there it is also. And then here's another one here, so let's bring those down. And I use the dialog where the count is to 10. And uh, I'm going to do that with a conversation with myself here. So let me, let's, let's just turn the uh, eyeball off on both footage and just listen to it, okay? And so let's see what we can hear here. Okay, so you can hear the dialogue is off there. Um, and if I listen to it again, let me turn it up just a little bit. You hear a door shut there and open. Well, definitely one, two. No, okay, let's try three more. Okay, so my second one's off a little bit. I'm just going to move it over just a little bit and see if that helps. Well, definitely one, two. No? Okay, let's try four. Okay, still off, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to move this. I think I need to move this clip over. Let's try it again. Okay, again. Well, there's only one. No. Okay, let's try three. Okay. All right, so it looks like maybe I need to move this the other way. Well, there's only one. Yeah, see, that's... 
Well, I could try. Let me see. Let me look at see which clip is which here. If I hold shift here and drag this, it'll snap right to the beginning. So let's turn on the eyeball on the first one. And notice that's the second one. That's the one I thought was down here. So I'm going to move that one down here. And this one in the top here, let's turn the speaker off the bottom one. I just want the door maybe shutting. Or maybe I don't have that luxury. Well, let's do this and let's take this one, bring the speaker, turn the speaker back on. Okay, now this one's on the top. That's the one I want to start with. So let's go to the top layer here and let me grab. Maybe just before that. Let's try maybe right there and maybe right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and split that. So I'm on the top layer here and split it. Again, the shortcut is Control Shift D. I'm going to take this footage and just delete it. Remember, I still have my original clips up here. So if I, if I mess anything up, I can always uh, redo it. But I'm going to go ahead and save this before in case I have any problems. So I'm going to call this 10 split screen, something like that. Oops. And let's go ahead and save that in my uh, folder on my desktop in case anything goes wrong. Um, last time I tried to edit this, After Effects dropped my footage and I was really pissed. I don't like the, uh, I hate the subscription model that they're following now. And we'll just save it right in there. So at least we have it saved now. And let's hear what we've got now. Well, well definitely one, two. two. No, okay, okay. Let's, let's try three more. Okay, still a little off here. This guy here needs to show up a little bit later. So I'm going to slide this over just a little bit and try that. So that's what it means to slide the tracks until you get them to line up. Well, definitely one, two. Okay, let's try three, four. It's pretty good. Five, six, seven, eight. Last stop for no. It's got to be ten. Close. So all I have to do, I think, is slide this over a little bit, and then I've got my uh, timing just about perfect. Well, definitely one, two. Okay, let's try three, four. The four is a little bit off. Let's let's move this over just a little bit more and see what happens. That's pretty good. I'm going to move it over just a little bit more just to see. That four is driving me crazy. I say no early. Well, definitely one. Two. Okay, that's pretty good there. I can keep. I think I can keep that and then get rid of the no that I say early. So let's go ahead and um, leave that where it is. Um, this will start about right there. So that's good. And then now we can take this and just drag this over right about here. And again, if I hold down shift, 
it'll snap right to it. And now I can take these two tracks here and just move these over. And again, hold down shift, it'll snap right to the beginning. Well, well definitely, definitely one. one. Two. Okay, let's look at the other clip too now while we're doing this. Let's go ahead and save it too. Don't forget to save every once in a while. And let's go ahead and check out this other clip. Oops, I forgot to turn the uh, eyeball off on the first one. And this one back on. Well, definitely one more. Let's go back one more time. Okay, you can well, see me there. Definitely one more. Two. Okay, let's okay. try three. Okay, so it looks pretty good. I think I can work with that. So in the next part of this assignment, in this demo, I'm going to show you how to create the, the scene where you can actually see me. Uh, and it looks like I'm conducting this dialogue with myself simultaneously. Okay, back here now. So we've got our dialogue now. So the next step is to find a frame. We're going to create our uh, track mat here like we did in the previous assignment. So I'm going to look for a spot where I'm sitting down here, and that's good right there. And then if I turn the eyeball off, you can see that maybe maybe just to the right of the file cabinet there is where I'll create my uh, line or my color differences. But there is a problem. And if one thing I notice here is if I start if I split it right here, notice when I walk in, I cross over that line. Oh, let me turn on, let's see, let's turn this one off. Notice there that when I come in, I kind of cross into where I'm sitting. Okay, so that's kind of a problem. So I'll show you how to remedy that if you run into that, or one way you can remedy it. But let's first, let's find a spot where the, I'm sitting down here. That looks good there. And then I'm sitting over here. So basically, we're going to take this shot make that our frame okay so i'm going to take this i'm going to go up to composition i'm going to choose save frame as we're going to save it as a file let's say i'll do this as a uh, and we'll call this track mat photo and it says photoshop psd but we could change that if we want i'm going to click save um, and it's saying, let's see here, well here, let me go down here, and if I do that, I'll get this render window, so I can go over here, I can keep it as a Photoshop file, which is fine, I'll just do that, or you can go in here, and you can change, instead of a Photoshop sequence, you can change it to a JPEG if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as a Photoshop document, track map photo PSD, and I'm going to output this to... Well, let's see. Let's take this and put it in, yeah, our A10 split screen footage folder. It's already set up. So I'm going to click Save. And then if you do it this way, you have to click the Render button. So don't forget to click Render So until you hear that noise. Okay. More room. So, so now I'm going to go into Photoshop and create my, uh, my um, track mat. Okay, so I'm going to go into the Creative Cloud here. Go into Photoshop. And we're just going to do a new file. And let's do 720 by 540 since that's what we're using. Hit create. And we'll grab that photo that I saved out. Or better yet, it's already a Photoshop file, isn't it? So we can close this. And let's just open the trap mat photo file.
Okay, and there it is. And so probably the most basic uh, track mat I can make would be to split it right down by my uh, arm there. So let's go ahead and just make a new layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the cube here on this layer. And I'm going to draw my area. It's pretty good there, but let's see if I can add to it. I'm holding down shift here. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit more there. So I capture all of myself plus some. So right there, that's probably going to be good right there. Maybe a little more. Let's try a tiny, tiny bit more. I'm holding shift while I'm drawing a little more area. And what that'll do is it'll add to my selection. Let's see if we can get away with that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make that. Um, we'll make that area white. So it'll preserve this area of the layer. So I'm going to grab my paint can and fill that in. And then what we're going to do is just select the inverse. So I'm going to go up to select. And I'm going to choose inverse or shift control I is your shortcut. So select inverse. And now we're going to fill that in with black. Okay, and that's basically my track mat right there. So deselect that. So now I'm just going to save this out as a JPEG. And notice there I missed a little on the top. So I'm going to zoom in and make sure I get that. You can see a little bit right there. If I zoom in right there. So I'm going to grab uh, my selection box here. And just select these pixels right next to it. And then just hold down Control and Alt. And drag those over while I'm holding Control and Alt. And then I just need to fill in one pixel. So let me grab the brush, bring my uh, brush level down, and let's make sure we're on white there. See if we can fill in that last pixel. There we go. So sometimes you might have to zoom in if you didn't get your selection 100% right and fill in uh, what you missed. And so there, that's going to be our track mat right there. So I'm going to do a file, export, um, export as. In this case, I'm going to make sure, oh yeah, JPEG's already selected. Let's go high quality here. And click export. And we're going to save this, and we're going to call it track mat. And that's going to be our track mat for our project. So I'm going to go here. AE10 split screen footage, click save, and there it is. There's the JPEG of our track mat. So that's the mat we're going to use to create this illusion that um, I am sitting in the same room with myself. Okay, I'm back, um, and I discovered an unforeseen problem, so I'm going to try to work my way through this and help you as well hopefully. So here is my footage and then what we're going to do is just bring our track mat photo into our After Effects project. Okay and here's the photo and notice there I've got a really sharp line here. Well I thought this was going to work flawlessly but the problem is I think the lighting was different in both scenes. So watch what happens here. Okay so in order to do this we want the track photo track mat photo, or track mat, I guess, to be up above the layer where we want to uh, create the matting. So now, under on layer two here, we're going to make sure that our track mat menu is showing up here. If not, you can click toggle switches and modes till it does. And then right here, for track mat, we're going to select track mat photo PSD that's above there. So we're going to click on that. And then we need to make sure that this box here is not doesn't say alpha mat but luma mat. So look what happened when I did that. Both sides of the screen are showing up. But the problem is there's a sharp line here and you can see how the lighting has changed. Well, definitely one. So I have my challenge here. Two. Okay. okay, so 
what I need to do. I could try brightness contrast controls, but I don't think that's going to fix the issue. Uh, plus, we have that sharp line. Um, so I could go in to my uh, effects here, under effects and presets, and try using color correction, maybe. Brightness contrast. Let's put that on the uh, video clip here. And, of course, I could brighten this up, but the problem is we're still seeing that sharp line, right? Uh, so I'm going to try another approach and see if I can make this happen <clears throat> and see if I can get rid of that sharp line. Okay, so here I am back in Photoshop here, and again, I have this really, really sharp line there. So I think what I'm going to do, and it's just to the right of the file cabinet. So I'm just going to maybe do it right along this file cabinet, maybe even a little over um, and see if I can do it along the straight line there. So let's go ahead, let's get rid of, we're going to get rid of this uh, track mat that I created and create a new one here. Um, so let's duplicate this layer here. Can just drag it to the plus sign there. And we'll call this track mat again. Just make my line along this file cabinet and then maybe over and around this way. So it wouldn't be a perfect straight line. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and we're going to use the uh, polygonal lasso tool here. And I'm just going to lasso out an area. Maybe about right there that I want to keep. And I'm just going to go up and around and just go right along the line of the file cabinet there if I can. Let's go right on the line here. And let's go maybe like so. Notice there, I'm changing my uh, line here because uh, I'm having trouble with the uh, colors here with the lighting. So I'm, I'm trying to work around the lighting issue. Let's go up here maybe. Maybe along the chair. And then up along the file cabinet there. Um, so maybe a straight line might not be the best approach. Something like this maybe will help. And we're just going to go all the way around. And this time I'm going to feather my brush here a little bit. So notice there we're selected there. And I'm on this other layer, so that's good. So we can take this now. And I'm going to grab a brush here, and then when you select your brushes up here, maybe grab one that has more of a feathered edge like that. And again, we'll make this white. And notice there it's kind of feathered uh, a little bit. Uh, we'll make it solid for now, and then we'll feather it out in just a little more in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and sharp, keep it a sharp edge for now, and then let's go ahead and do Select, choose Inverse or Shift-Control-I. We'll fill in the other side black, and then we'll feather out the uh, edge a little bit. Okay, so we're making a slightly different mat here, and this time what we're going to do is feather out the edge just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to make one kind of fade into the other. So Control D to deselect, and we're going to soften this sharp edge here a little bit. So I'm going to try one method by selecting it, going up to Select. Um, let's go Modify, Feather, and let's try uh, feathering this edge a little bit and there um, it did soften the edges and make some curves that's not necessarily what I was going for so I'm going to go ahead and delete that or get undo that sorry control Z and I think what I could do is grab my uh, brush again 
and instead of 100% opacity or flow, I'm going to bring these down. Maybe I'll bring the opacity down to about 60 and the flow down to about 75 maybe. And just see if I can kind of feather these edges here to where one will kind of fade into the other. So just giving this hard edge here a little bit of a feather. Like so. Just take your time because, um, again, a lot of it's going to depend on not having those sharp edges. Just try to smoothen out those sharp edges a little bit. Just get rid of those sharp lines, maybe. Something like that. So we're just kind of feathering out the sharp line. Or lines, sorry. And, uh, yeah, something like that might give us what we're looking for. It's going to be close, but we'll see if that works. Okay, so now I'm going to take this uh, track mat here. Actually, let's maybe we can add it back in a little white too. Just to, oops, Control Z. Okay, just add a little back in so we're. Just give it a little bit of a touch up there. Okay, or maybe not. Okay, so that's, let's try what we had before. I think that looks as good as I'm going to get it. And, uh, oh, let's fill in this over here, too. Make sure everything's colored in. Nice and dark there. Okay, so now we're going to export this out again. Export as. I'm going to do a JPEG again. 720 by 540, perfect. And we're going to go right back into that same... Uh, I'm going to call it Track Mat Feather 2, since I already feathered one and it wasn't very good. So Track Mat Feather 2, save that. There it is there. I'm going to delete this other one, because that one didn't work. And let's try bringing that into After Effects and see if we can make it look a little better. So we're going to go back into After Effects here. Let's see. And I guess I heard closed it out. So let's go back to our folder here. And we're going to go into our split screen. And see if we can make this look a little better at least to start. Okay. So now we're going to take that Track Mat Feather 2. Bring that in. And again, that should be on top of the layer that you want to create the mat with. So that one's up on top there, so we can turn the eyeball off on that top layer. Go to the layer just beneath it, and for our track mat, again, we're going to choose Track Mat Feather 2. And then this little box here to the right of Track Mat Feather 2, we're going to choose Luma instead of Alpha. So we'll click there. And now we've got Luma matting. And look at that. It does look better, but look, it's cutting some of me out here. So I think this could probably work really well, but I'm going to have to go in back into Photoshop and bring, add some more white here to bring my image back here. So I'll come back in just a minute and get that done. Okay, back in Photoshop here. And again, I think what we're missing is some of this area over here. So... I'm going to go, I'm going to try something. Let me show you this. I can turn this on and then I can go up and bring my opacity down. And then I can kind of see where the line is. So if I just add some white over in this area, I should be okay. So I'm going to go on to this layer again. Just kind of up on the top here. 
and I'm going to grab my brush, which I am, and it's giving me trouble. I guess I need to turn that on, too. Go into that layer. There we go. And then I'm just going to slowly add some white in there. I better bring up my opacity here so I can see it. And Oops. Control Z. Change your foreground color to white if you need to. And then just kind of, let's just kind of brush back a little bit of detail here that we're going to want to preserve. That might be, that might do the trick right there. Okay. And then just looking at this, uh, maybe a little more here. And we're just going to try to feather in some of that detail that we lost. Um, okay, I'm back. So uh, I'm going to, again, if you look at this, uh, I think I had too much black feathered in there, so it's taking away from my image there. So what I did is I went back into Photoshop and I just added a little more in there. Um, just kind of added, feathered it in there a little bit, and then there's still a sharp line right there with black, so maybe I'll just kind of try to cover that too. Oh, that's a little much there. Maybe just come out here and do it. There we go. So let's see how that works there with uh, a little more feathering there along the edge there with that my brush there um, and let's go from there and see what we can do okay so we're going to take this track mat now and we're going to export it out export again as a jpeg and we'll call this uh, track mat feather three <laughs> this is the third one i've made by the way so don't panic if you don't get it right the first time uh, it might take a few uh, track mats to get it right to eliminate any unnecessary lines or anything like that. So let's go back into After Effects here. We're going to delete this track mat again. We had some uh, erasure here of my image. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to bring this new one back in. So I'm going to go up here and grab Feather 3 and drop that one in. And again, we're going to turn the eyeball off here. And down on the track, just beneath the uh, track mat, is where you want to create your um, luma mat so we're going to select track mat feather three the the one the track above this one and there we go look at that and then make sure that this is set to luma instead of um, alpha and that looks much better see when you feather the edge you eliminate that harsh edge and now it looks like i'm in the same room with myself so that's a great uh way to do it there so i learned through uh just through making a few mistakes that the best way to do it is maybe not a straight line and maybe not uh <clears throat> real sharp edges too you might want to have them feathered like that so i think that can work and we've gotten a lot closer here and i've eliminated erasing myself here all right so once you get your um <clears throat> your uh, track mat working next thing you want to do is consider right here where they overlap you can see my arm getting cut off there. Well, there is a there is hope there. What we can do is uh, we can separate the track. So maybe it starts right here where I come in and sit down before my arm disappears. So let me grab that right there, and let's go to um, let's split it. Let's do that. So Control shift d Now on this clip here, notice here we still have our audio in there. But all we want to do maybe is just turn the video off. So I'm going to go over here and bring the opacity on this down to zero. Okay. So that video won't even show up there. And then by the time it gets here, boom, it comes in. So we're going to do the same thing with this first clip here of me. Right there grab this video clip and again separate it control shift D again on this first one here that I split open that up audio still there that's good we want to keep the audio um, but we want to turn down the opacity on this clip so it's now that's down to zero percent 
So now we have audio, but no video in the beginning. Well, definitely want. Okay. So there, that addressed that. So I got rid of that overlap by just using a black screen there. And now when they come in. Well, definitely one. So the last step probably for this would be to uh, adjust the brightness contrast on this, the video here. So the one with the track mat on it. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's this one here, which is, yeah, Feather 3. So again, we're going to take a uh, effect here. We're going to go to Effects and Presets, and we're going to do um, Color Correction, Brightness Contrast. We're going to try that one. Drop that on this clip here. As we come in here, I can brighten that up a little bit, or I can change the contrast to match the other one. And notice there, it's kind of matching the other one and when I adjust the contrast there it makes it a little little more uh, blend in a little better so that would be the final step is to adjust your brightness contrast on your and here where there's black screen I could maybe put a title here and then there I sit down well definitely one and there it's rendering so you can hear the audio going a little haywire there but So it's, it's rendering out, but once it renders, you'll hear the audio exactly like it should be. Well, definitely one, two, okay, let's try three, four, five, six, seven, eight, last offer nine, nope, it's got to be ten. Okay, so right there, that's you see how it's done. You basically have to build a track mat. Uh, you have to film your uh, two different clips of you talking. And then when you bring them together, you apply the Luma mat and, uh, you know, make some final adjustments. Uh, make sure you don't overlap with yourself. And maybe use brightness and contrast and some color control. And you can make it look like you're having a conversation with yourself in the same room.